This is KGW News at Noon. Hello, I'm Christine Tedawanich. We begin at noon with the final January 6th committee hearing. Just about 30 minutes ago, the lawmakers unanimously approved criminal referrals against former President Donald Trump. The committee argues the evidence presented merits prosecution by the Justice Department. These are the four criminal referrals. It includes conspiracy to defraud the United States and incite, assist, or aid and comfort an insurrection. Now, it'll be up to the DOJ to decide what charges, if any, to bring. The January 6th investigation has gone on now for 18 months. A full final report is expected to be released later this week. Closer to home, the Markham Bridge now open after a crash this morning. It happened just after 5 a.m. in the northbound lanes of I-5. Police say it involved a semi-truck and a man who was working outside on his car. The man was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The truck driver stayed at the scene. And a man accused of starting a fire that destroyed a Salem restaurant over the weekend is due in court today. This is the Lucky Fortune restaurant and lounge on Lancaster Drive Northeast early Sunday morning. Police say the restaurant fire is one of three arsons the suspect confessed to the same night. And as our Catherine Cook reports, investigators are looking into a fourth that was caught on camera. Flames rising up from the Lucky Fortune restaurant and lounge on Lancaster Drive Northeast in Salem. Investigators say the fire started just after one Sunday morning. The bar was still open with customers inside, including Jesse here. Uh, well, we ran out back and everybody, I grabbed a fire extinguisher, tried to put it out, but obviously it got too big. Eventually the roof caved in as fire destroyed most of the building. By daylight, the fire was out. Crews returned every hour to make sure it hadn't flared up again. The owners left in a state of shock. I'm not sure what we're going to do right now. I mean, I just got on the phone with the insurance. Young Ping Lee is restaurant manager. He says his family bought Lucky Fortune less than a year ago. He believes someone set the fire on purpose. On Sunday afternoon, police confirmed those suspicions. They arrested Leonardo Hernandez Cruz on multiple charges, including second-degree arson. Before starting the restaurant fire, investigators say Hernandez Cruz set two other fires in the same area. That includes the dumpster of a bottle drop building where surveillance video helped police identify him. On Monday, Cruz responded to another major fire, this one at Lighthouse Home Loans in West Salem. In this case, security cameras caught someone starting the fire. It happened around 5.30 in the morning. You can see the person grabbing cardboard from the dumpster, then lighting it on fire. Within minutes, flames are climbing the side of the building on Wallace Road Northwest. Investigators say it's too soon to conclude if this fire and the restaurant fire are connected. Young Ping is just grateful no one was hurt. Hope everything turns good and glad that everyone's safe. In Salem, Catherine Cook. KGW News. Salem police are asking anyone with information about that fourth fire at the Lighthouse Home Loans building to call their tips line. That number is 503-588-8477. Meantime, in downtown Portland, the owners of Dar Salaam restaurant are growing frustrated with crime in the area. The family-owned Iraqi restaurant on Southwest Alder was broken into Saturday night. You can see the thief on this security footage, damaging windows, stealing cash, liquor bottles too. The owner says this is the fourth time this has happened in the past year and a half. The restaurant has been in Portland for about a decade and the owner wants the city to step up. But I really, I really encourage the city to help the small owners running business downtown because it's really, it's not help with, we don't need support with money. We need support with the cleaning. We need support safety. We need to bring downtown Portland like before. The owner tells us vandalism has been another issue on top of break-ins that they've experienced. And take a look at this mess. A semi-truck leaked red dye all over miles of freeways throughout Portland. The dye is used for mulch, but instead it ended up on I-205 in Clackamas County and then on I-84 all the way out to Troutdale. The driver told police he was aware of the leak, but says his company told him to keep going to his final stop. He was cited for several things, including criminal mischief and reckless driving. The dye, though, is water-soluble, so it should wash off. 
off. But police say if the dye that splashed on your car, if you have some, does not come off, contact your insurance company. Okay, time now to check in with Rod Hill in the Weather Center. And Rod, when are we expecting any more rain to roll in, maybe help wash that dye away? Uh, in terms of measurable stuff, I'm going to say tomorrow. Uh, it looks like we could have some spritzy stuff around today, but probably not enough to settle the dust. Not that we have dust, but as the old saying goes, we have cloudy skies over Lincoln City. 48 degrees there. The clouds are pretty solid all the way up through the Cascades and really most of our two state area cloudy at noon. Here's downtown Portland from the Wells Fargo building 41 degrees. We've seen steady temperatures for literally about three days in a row right now and these numbers you're looking at currently 39 on Gresham won't change much today either. 45 in Salem a little bit warmer than the rest of us 40 degrees up in McMinnville. Again, maybe you find a spritzy shower or a trace of moisture. Otherwise, it will just continue to be like it has been this morning. Cloudy skies, temperatures 42 at 4, 39 at 8 o'clock. Winds are fairly light. So we have the rain coming in tomorrow. And then if you haven't heard, we're tracking what looks to be right now a good chance of freezing rain and sleet coming in Thursday night, Friday. We'll talk more about that coming up. Okay, Rod, keeping an eye on it for us. Thank you so much. So if you've ever been inside the Lloyd Center Mall, you might know the smell instantly. We're talking about the rich, sweet caramel corn, and Joe Brown's has been making it since 1932. They were actually one of the original tenants of the Lloyd Center when it opened in 1960. Now, as our Christelle Kumwe found, they're opening up a second location in a pretty historic area of Northeast Portland. This corner is like the Chamber of Commerce. MLK near Killingsworth in Northeast Portland. It's where Geneva's Sheer Perfection Salon and Barbershop stood for 30 years. It was just a good spot to be. Paul Knowles Jr. says the barbershop was a cornerstone in Portland's black community. Barber and beauty salons are somewhere where we go as a community and we are unapologetically ourselves. His father, Paul Nall Sr. and stepmom Geneva started the business. In this corner, when the shop first opened, there was a manicurist. He closed the salon two years ago amid COVID-19 concerns. It, it was just time. There comes a time when, you know, it's, it's time to move on. Also a time to figure out what goes in its place. I had three criteria. Community, opportunity, and someone that was really tied to this community. And there's no way you could come to a Lloyd Center without smelling that aroma of the caramel corn. That aroma will soon spread through the space. We are standing in the new Joe Brown's Caramel Corn MLK. David Ferguson owns Joe Brown's Caramel Corn at Lloyd Center, the last original store from the mall's grand opening in 1960. He is now bringing a piece of that history here. Getting the, the, the tap on the shoulder from the Nalls and actually just being able to change this building around to fit my concept has been, has been great. A concept that includes a lounge and, of course, their signature sweet, crunchy treat. I get my popcorn at the mall and now it's going to be right in the neighborhood, so I'm excited for that. <laughs> for Erica Fambule, connecting the salon's past history with the present, feels like sheer perfection in of itself. I'm a hairstylist. I used to work here <laughs> a long time ago. And um, my husband got his hair cut here. And it's just been a really nice establishment to the community for so many years. From one community fixture to another. Uh, we're going to create a window here where the, the popcorn will be. It's history honored in the King neighborhood. And the future here is popping. Everything that a community means mentorship took place in this building. Yeah, that's that's what this spot means. And that's what it's going to continue to mean. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News.